Hi, I'm Asif Misklix, and today I'm trying to answer the question, are Blizzard devs incompetent? Now, why would I even ask such a question? This is because there is a situation that is still ongoing with the stash tabs in Diablo 4. Um, if you didn't know about this, essentially you are currently limited to a very low amount of stash tabs in Diablo 4, a game that is completely focused around loot and getting as much items as possible that you want to keep around. So that's a bad limitation for such a game to have. And when the developers were asked why we can't just have more stash tabs, their answer was the following, and I quote, when we say they are expensive, what we mean is that they create a lot of memory overhead. When you see another player in game, you load them and their entire stash filled with all their items. This is what teams are working diligently to improve so that we can have more ASAP. Now, to a normal customer, this sounds a lot like shoddy programming. I think you cannot really explain why it takes so much time to implement such an easy feature. And this is what I kind of want to explain. The first question we need to ask is, is it actually hard? Is this an actually difficult problem? Or are the people at Blizzard just struggling with something extremely simple? And this question is actually more complicated than it seems. Because the, the problem with problems in programming is that if you have a well set up system that is receptive to changes, then these changes are very, very easy to implement. Now, the obvious question is, is it actually hard to implement another stash tab? And I think the answer to this question is no. It is not hard to add stash tabs in a game like Diablo 4. All that would require on the programming side is basically to change a few numbers. So instead of like four tabs, you would have five and then change the UI a bit to give you the stash tabs, essentially. But the problem is just because the change is easy to implement doesn't mean it comes with a lot of consequences. This is the case in Diablo 4 right now. For them, it is also very easy to just give you more stash tabs. The problem is they can't really deal with the consequences that come of that. Since their system is configured in a way that makes you load each and every other character and all their stashes and items when you meet them, this would just overload your client. You would lose a lot of performance. So the conclusion of this is, this is a system that would be easy to change if it wasn't for the fact that it was implemented in the way that it is in Diablo 4. Then the next obvious question is, why is it implemented like that in Diablo 4? And that is actually a question that is at the core of the problem. Because now we kind of need to ask, can't they do better? Are the devs at Blizzard actually too incompetent to make a system that would dynamically load the data you need instead of always loading everything? This reads like a beginner developer's mistake. And to answer this question, we have to look into how software is developed. So in software development, there are a million ways to solve a simple problem. For example, loading the items of other players. Now let's get into the head of a developer. You are making a game and you're going to meet characters in that game. These characters wear equipment and have items in their bank stash. Now, the data you always gonna need is of course the equipment that is worn by the other player, also their appearance data. So that is something that you would naturally wanna load all the time when you meet someone else, how they look like. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to meet them. What you then definitely don't want to load every time you meet someone is their bank stash because you have actually no business looking into that except if you want to interact with that on purpose and then probably 
only one player at a time. Now, why would you then load all the bank stash? And that is fairly easy to answer why you would want to do that. And that is, imagine you have another player in the city and you have loaded their appearance data and now the player goes ahead and changes some of their equipment. They take a new item out of their bank and then they equip it. Now, how would you know, how would they communicate this change to you? Would they send a notification to the game server to tell you that their equipment has changed? It seems a little bit much to then reload their entire equipment when they do a change and, and you kind of don't know when to do that. Or you could load all their data all the time and then just hand all of the management of, of what happens next to the client. So the other player just says, hey, my equipment has changed and you have all the data to display the change I just made. There's no more data exchange between us and the server that needs to happen. And that's the motivation for implementing such a system like this, I think. It cuts down on communication between you and the game server. You have, when you meet another person, you have all the data you need to do all the in-game interactions you need with them. And that is, in my opinion, the motivation to implement a system like this. Because you just need to have one communication with the game server. It sends you all the data you need. And from that point on, the client can just take over the nitty gritty and do all the visual stuff. You already have all the information you're going to need since it is very unlikely that another player is going to acquire new items whilst loaded in your game session. And then you can handle that dynamically once that happens. But this is going to be a rare case. So you kind of optimized for communication with the game server. And you would um, want to do that in the beginning stages of development because the alternative would be a system that dynamically loads and requests the data it needs at that moment currently. And for that system, you need a whole nother layer of communication between you and the game server and other players. So you need to talk to the game server when you want to trade with someone. You want to say, hey, I want to trade with this person. Now I kind of need to look at their stash. So can you please send me over the stash information? And this adds another step. And that is a system. The, the, the system that handles this communication needs to be written. And I think that is what is happening right now at Blizzard. It is not that they are incapable of changing an existing system. It is that in order to make the change and for your client to still work reliably, they need to write an entirely new system that wasn't in place before. Why wasn't a system like this in place before? And this is probably because of bad project management. I don't think that the developers at Blizzard wouldn't know how to implement such a system. Actually, the, the entry requirements for big software firms are so difficult. And the, entry, uh, the interview questions are so difficult that I cannot imagine that a developer that would pass a technical interview in a company like Blizzard would ever be incapable of creating such an easy system. I cannot imagine that. So I would actually rule out the devs working at Blizzard in this consideration. Now, why did I stress working at Blizzard earlier? Because, and this is pure speculation, but this system seems just insignificant enough to have been passed off to a cheaper software service provider company. And this could explain how incompetence could play a role in the development of this system. What I think is the far more likely answer, though, is project management. Most of the time, software developers do not get to decide themselves what they want to work on or how much time they want to put into it. And I could very well imagine a scenario where a system that was a preliminary system wrote by someone to just make it work in, in order to test other features could have been just taken as is because spending more time on it costs money and hey, as long as it works. And since the people creating those games 
often do not play this kind of game, as we saw in uh, the Diablo designer reels, um, it is very likely that people could not imagine that you would need more than four to five stash tabs. That this is just something that you just don't need because, hey, you have your class, you can like equip eight items or 10, and hey, maybe give him 40 slots, that should be fine. Something like that. It is actually thinkable that people that actually make the decision what to spend time on do not understand what kind of game they're making and thus the developers don't get to make the right choices so they are not given the tools and the time to do the work right now how could project management be responsible for such a problem and i think this is a key example of a problem that may arise when using the agile production method Again, this is speculation. I'm not a Blizzard insider. This is just me and my opinion. I don't know how this system was produced or how it was written exactly. So take my opinion with a grain of salt, please. But in Agile, you get assigned tasks. These tasks need to be fulfilled and then walk through a process. Doesn't matter too much. And at some point, you're going to mark them as finished. Now, the problem is a task in programming isn't so binary. You can finish in, in the case of just making it work. And this is something we see in this system. This system essentially works. It just breaks at some point that could have been uh, expected. But it works. If you, if you want to classify it in a binary state, then it either doesn't work or it works. And this system works, so it's done. So let's imagine a developer wrote the system and then submitted it as working for now maybe he even earmarked it for, to himself for further improvement later on and then he used up his allotted time on the system which might have been too little and the system was then later on accepted and put into the finished task bin now the finished task bin when a feature lands in there it depending on the company and the management can be very very difficult to get out again and you essentially as a developer have absolutely no motivation to start the process because what that would mean is you would need to bring it up in a meeting in front of the project management and project management doesn't really understand development at all most of them cannot program even a little bit so you would then need to explain an efficiency problem to essentially lay people that motivates them to spend more time, so essentially money, giving you a task that you already finished back in order for you to make an improvement on the system. Now, this could actually reflect bad back on you because they would essentially ask you, why didn't you do it right in the first place? And I don't think that there are managers at Blizzard that would be happy with the answer that you would need to give them and that is that you did it right in the first place. They just didn't allot you enough time and you need more to do it properly. Uh, and if there's, there's a very easy scenario that I can see where such a broken system would just make it through. And then the developer wouldn't want the hassle essentially to for no reason for themselves because you, you don't know which exact developer wrote the system. They're kind of clean out. Now they might get in trouble. But most likely, with most of the systems they're going to make, they're not going to get in trouble. So there's absolutely no motivation for them to go back and, and do all this hassle. They, it, I, I can't see a reason why you would do that. And this is a failing of management and the agile production process. And this is why I think this system ended up like this. It was either outsourced to a company that really was incapable. And that's why they are so cheap, by the way. They can't really do the things. So that, that's why sometimes egregious errors and, and beginner mistakes end up in AAA products. Or it was bad management because I don't think a single developer working at Blizzard right now, or even one of the ones let go sadly, was incompetent. Because in order to land a job in a place like Blizzard, and you can think of them whatever you like, you need to be a good developer. There's no question in my mind that the game developers and programmers at Blizzard are great and, and highest in class. So now, what would be a solution to a systemic problem like this? And the solution is restructuring. 
which we just see. Microsoft just let go a ton of Blizzard employees. Now, we don't know who exactly this was. We don't know if this was developers, designers, management. They might just have made the completely wrong move and blamed the developers and left the bad management in place. Or they might actually have gotten rid of the new man the bad management after uh, an investigation. That's also thinkable. So I think many, many of these game companies suffer from the fact that people are in management that do not play video games, that do not understand the product they're making. They are neither creative, they aren't artistic, and they aren't technically inclined. They are managers. They are, these are human resources people. They manage people. And they very often do not understand what goes into making a product. They don't understand a single line of code, and they probably don't know what makes a picture great. They probably are more concerned with marketing and profits and how cheap can we squeeze this certain feature out of this developer. This is the mindset that you get from many middle management people. And I think if you want to look at someone to blame, then don't look at the developers. Look at management. Thank you for watching this video. I originally planned to talk about this on stream, but then I realized that this subject is a little bit too touchy and too important to me personally to not give it my undivided attention. This is why I put this in a separate video. Other than that, all I can say is have a good day.